In this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how you can run a speed test on a Synology NAS using iPerf3. Now, iPerf3 is a tool that measures the achievable bandwidth that you can have between one device and another device. In this case, our server will be our Synology NAS and our client will be a different device on our network. This is just gonna test the local network speeds between those two devices. It's a good idea to do this just so that you can benchmark if you're getting the correct speeds. And by having those benchmarks, you'll be able to determine in the future if you ever decide to upgrade your networking, if you're getting the correct speeds then as well. So we're gonna be setting this up on Docker in DSM 7.1. And I just came out with a video because Docker changed slightly in DSM 7.1. I'll leave a pop-up for that now just so you could see the changes. But we're basically just gonna be setting up our Synology NAS to function as an iPerf3 server. So the first thing that you have to do is open up Docker and then you can select registry. From there, search for iPerf3 and then you can download the latest network static forward slash iPerf3 image by double clicking it. When it's done downloading, you can double click the image to create a new container. And the first setting you're gonna to have to change is use the same network as Docker host and then you can select next and then give the container a name. The other thing that you can do is enable auto restart if you want. Now I normally don't do this and the reason is because I don't run these tests particularly often. So when I wanna run it, I go in and I start the container and when I'm done, I stop it. However, if you wanna make sure that this starts every time your Synology NAS starts, you can enable that option here. After that, you can select advanced and then in the execution command, you're gonna type dash dash server. This is just like I said a little earlier to make sure that when this container runs, it runs as a server. You can then leave everything else as default and you can click next until you can create the container. Now we're not gonna actually be changing anything because we don't have to map any volumes. There's nothing in this container that's particularly important. If you ever have to change this or move it to a different server, you can do it on that server. You don't necessarily need to save anything. The only thing that you do have to change is if you're using Synology's firewall, you can open up the firewall and create an allow rule for TCP port 5201. That is the port that iPerf3 uses. So at this point, the server for iPerf3 is set up and it's running. So that means that you can open a client device and you can connect to your Synology NAS and then you can test the connection speeds. Now I'm gonna show you two options here. I'm gonna show you a Raspberry Pi and I'm gonna show you a Windows PC. For both of these, I have written instructions on how you can install it in the description of the video, but it's pretty straightforward. You just have to go through and run one command on the Raspberry Pi and on the Windows PC, you just have to download a package and then navigate to the folder. But if you're interested in checking that out, just check out the written instructions in the description. So pulling up my Raspberry Pi here, I'm gonna run the command iperf3-c and then the IP address of my Synology NAS. And that's just saying for the Raspberry Pi to run as a client and then connect to our server, which is our Synology NAS. So when I run this command, what you're gonna see is that I'm getting transfer speeds between around 100 and 110 megabytes per second. And the reason for that is because I'm on a wired Raspberry Pi and I'm connected to a wired Synology NAS. Now for the most part, these are the maximum speeds that I'm gonna receive because I'm going from a one gigabit NIC on my Raspberry Pi to a one gigabit NIC on my Synology NAS. Now if I was to upgrade to say 10 gigabit ethernet on my Synology NAS and I had a second device that supported 10 gig as well, what you'd notice is the transfer speeds would be 10 times faster. Now this is on a wired device to a wired device. So I have a Windows PC here and this Windows PC is connected via Wi-Fi. And what you're gonna see is that when I run the same command, I'm gonna get transfer speeds that are about half to a little bit less than half what I was receiving on my wired connection. And the main reason is because I'm on Wi-Fi. You're never gonna get the same speeds on Wi-Fi as you will on a wired connection. So at this point, this is a baseline for me. So if either of these numbers were totally way off, which for me, they're really not, but if they were totally way off, I could go through and try and troubleshoot exactly what might be causing it. But at least I have a baseline here, and if I was to ever upgrade in the future, I'd be able to determine that at that time, I'm getting the correct network speeds as well. So I'm hoping that this video helped you guys out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and please consider subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. Thanks guys.